Now, you'll like this story. 95 people have been discharged from the Royal Bournemouth and Christchurch hospitals after contracting coronavirus. One of the 95 patients discharged was cardiac nurse Tracy Witcher. Ms Witcher's colleagues formed a special guard of honour for her as she left the hospital. Joining me now on the line is BJ Waltho, who's Associate Director of Operations at Royal Bournemouth and Christchurch Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. A uh, lovely day for you, BJ. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very well, Sam, and yourself? Symptom-free, which is uh, <laughs> that's what I want to be able to say we every day. We ask intimate questions of ourselves <laughs> and our colleagues now, don't we? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but this must be a very rewarding day for you and the staff. Uh, you've got all of those patients recovering because we only hear about, obviously, the daily death toll, um, but people do get better, don't they? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm really pleased that we've been given this opportunity to share that with you because it is important. I know, and although our sympathies go out to those poor relatives of those patients, nurses, doctors who have died, we've also got to remind the public that actually, you know, a lot of people are going home well. Tracy, who you talked about, who is a nurse I've known for many years, and was in ITU really, really poorly. And she went home, and that's why we gave her that guard of honour, because we were so pleased to see her going, going home. And we have got some really good stories of people, an uh, elderly couple, a husband and wife, who came in from a care home and were both very, very poorly. And we nursed them together in, in a ward so they could be together. And then they both went home and, and they were 90, in their 90s. So there's lots of good stories in them amongst the very, very sad ones. Absolutely. Now, just talking about Tracy, it must be very difficult when you're on the front line in the NHS to see one of your own fall so ill. Um, and I guess that the converse of that is that when she's discharged, the morale boost that it gives the staff must be so much greater. Uh, absolutely. And I just don't know how my colleagues, because I am a nurse by profession, but how my colleagues throughout the United Kingdom feel when one of their own die, because that must be absolutely dreadful. But to see one of your own colleagues go home after after tackling that, it's, it's just brilliant. And of course, previous week we had Linda going home. Linda knew who was on, she was on the TV. Mm. And what was good about with her was actually she worked at the Macmillan unit. So, and she was also very poorly. So we've had two staff go in and two staff come out and go home, which is brilliant for us because it does, as you say, when it's one of your own, it, it does make it a little bit more difficult, but all our patients it doesn't matter whether your staff or not get the same high level of care but it just gives you that special little boost as you say when it's someone you've known for a long time now i know that the hospital i see on twitter has welcomed six new recruits uh, third year nursing students um how are they getting on and how important will they be uh, how, how useful will they be to the to the work into the hospital well we, we're just overcome by the help that we, we've received from, from various people and these, these student nurses, they're at the end of their training um, and, the, and the law change that meant that they could be employed with us, and, which is great. And they've chosen to work in ED, which is, you know, the real front line of all of this. And we've, um, we've got a, a sister down in ED who's done a really good training package because it could be a little bit overwhelming from them for them, but they've gone straight in there and good for them. But not only those student nurses, we've just had a load of medical students arrive in the trust to support us as well. So the, the help from the colleagues as well as the general public has been actually quite overwhelming and, um, yeah, really good. Well, I'm so pleased to hear that. I was speaking uh, earlier in this programme to a consultant oncologist and uh, he was talking about the capacity that they've managed to achieve at Southampton General. And I know that um, you you two are the, the I mean, extraordinary logistical um, uh, achievement. You've got capacity in your, in your prepared now for uh, the levels of COVID-19 that we may or may not see. Um, but uh, people, people are not coming to the hospital perhaps because they're fearful. Um, what, what message do you have to people uh, who, pay, who feel poorly but they're frightened to come in? That, that, that is a really good point and it's one that we discuss in the Trust and is, a bit, is very worrying to us. We have got capacity. We're not a COVID hospital. Not everybody in, in the hospital 
is has got COVID, we've got what we call green and red areas, the green being the non-COVID. So we can take admissions and we really, really want to get a strong message across that we don't want people to stay at home thinking that everybody, you know, in the hospital is COVID and they're going to catch COVID because we've got a pathway that segregates those patients. And that's why I was keen to say that, you know, 95 95 percent 95 percent 95 of our patients have gone home even when they've had covid we we're here we're ready for you this you know we want you we don't want you to stay at home especially if you've got a condition because you will get worse we want you to come here where our doors are open where you'll be most welcome to come we've got the capacity for you and we don't want people to be fearful or frightened about coming into the hospital it's really a very very important message Absolutely. Um, well, you say you, 95 people discharged. How many people are you treating for COVID? How many hospitalisations do you have? At, uh... Um, so at the moment, we've got 40 positive cases in the trust. And if you think we've got, uh, yeah. uh, we've got about 600 beds in the hospital, yeah, I think that just gets a little bit in proportion, doesn't it, mm, that with absolutely. the capacity that we've got. And I mean, I do want to take this opportunity, really, of thanking all our partners Who've, who've helped us, like Dorset Health, Healthcare Community Health Trust and the local authorities, who really have worked in close collaboration with us to allow us to get patients home that much quicker. We're not, you know, as soon as people are well, they are going home. So the lessons and the processes we're putting today will, will actually take us forward for the rest, uh, for, the, for, for, for the future. It's not just a lesson for COVID. It, the, the collaboration has been absolutely amazing we're doing things that we never thought we'd be able to do it it's I, can i be positive about this covid yes I, please do. I want there are things that are just really that we've just changed so much that we never thought we would but it's all for the benefit of our patients which is which is why we're all here well, BJ, it's great news. Congratulations. I'm glad you've had a good day. And uh, I prescribe I don't know, a glass of Prosecco or a small sherry uh, by, by way of... Uh... I'm actually on call today. Okay. So you're not allowed to have a drink. <laughs> but it would be a large gin and tonic maybe tomorrow. But not today, I'm afraid. But thank you for the thought. <laughs> BJ, it's on me. Thank you, my darling. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us here on BBC Radio Soden. That was BJ Walfo, Associate Director of Operations at the Royal Bournemouth and Christchurch Hospitals, NHS. Foundation Trust. Great news.